Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls. And this is an overview for all 12 signs for the week beginning September 6th, 2021. So even though I'm putting a date on it, it's really timeless. All the videos are timeless. You watch it whenever it feels right for you. You may want to watch your sun, moon, and rising. The only reason why I'm using astrological signs, not being an astrologer myself, uh, I'm an angel medium, <laughs> is just to be able to uh, sort of sort out the uh, the energies, right? Put it into smaller groups. And also because that's what people are familiar with, all right? So there is that. We are doing this type of format on a test run. If you like this format, if you like me doing all 12 signs, the way you let me know is by liking, sharing, and subscribing, all right? If I don't see that there are many views on it, it tells me, or many likes, it tells me the audience doesn't want it. I move on to other content, okay? Now this, you know, the, the base content of my channel would be the weeklies, okay? That's how it's always been. All the other types of readings I do on here, other content, I do treat those like movable pieces. That is to say that if other projects come up or I get swamped with personal readings or what have you, you know, we'll have to see how this goes. <laughs> okay. So there is that. The other thing I need to mention is that there are fighter jets going over. They're flying low. It sounds like they're going to land on my balcony. Uh, they're loud and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I've literally waited all morning to sit and do this to see if it calmed down. They're quiet right now, but you'll see, you'll see they'll come roaring in. The other thing that I need to mention is that People, thank you, by the way, to those of you who have brought it to my attention that someone is now impersonating me out there trying to solicit readings. It is not me. I would never reply to your comment with like rainbow emojis and all kinds of nonsense, like <laughs> asking you to go through my WhatsApp number to get a reading. The only way that you can get a personal reading with me is to go to my website, which is angelsouls444.com. Now, some of you who use certain types of browsers, you have reported back that when you book a reading with me, sometimes you get a warning about security and all of this. So I went to Squarespace. I've been to them numerous times. The first time they said, oh, it's just easy. You just got to certify this, that, and the other. Went through all those steps. It persisted. I came back. They couldn't find anything wrong with it. And then I was finally, the latest, was told that because I get my domain name through someone that's not them, and that doesn't play nice with... Google security or whatever, because they're always changing things, that there could be a warning popping up around that. So again, I've done everything I can. Okay. I don't know what they're doing or why, but there's that. <laughs> okay. So also one last thing I am in the process. I've already filmed the Raziel seven day meditation challenge. I will be editing that along with this content. So by the time this goes up, you should have that as well. Well, okay. Oh, wait, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. I started to edit the dailies. Now I record all that ahead of time. And for September 11th, there, I was mentioning there, I keep seeing waves around New York City. So I don't know if there's going to be like some weather around New York City. I was seeing like flooding, basically. I got to get better at this predictive stuff. I'm always like so resistant to it, but like it's there. I'm just not good at pinpointing when. Yeah, I'll try. Okay. And of course, my love to everybody who has been affected by floods. Of course, to everybody who is now in need in one way or another, especially my love to all the children. Um, and I ask that all of you put your protective light around the children and all the innocent people out there. Okay. There is all of that. Let's get on to Aries. Hi, Aries. Let's see what's going on for you for this coming week or whenever you end up seeing the video. Okay, that should do it right there. First card out we have is faith. Now this could be a time where maybe it's just news from around the world. Or, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the example of Afghanistan. I mean, we were hearing certain things through the news. But if you actually watch footage of the things that would be happening, oh my God, it, it really does make you lose faith a little bit. Um, I don't want to go down that road too much, but 
you know, it, there could be a lot of things that are going on or even in your own life where it's really, I mean, it's really affecting you where you're, you're seeing people for their true colors. You're seeing where people are just not in their integrity. It's almost as if they have forgotten themselves and it's, or maybe you have forgotten yourself. Are you acting out of integrity? right? It's definitely a shakeup moment coming, but it's not surprising. Okay. It's just, you finally get the answers you were looking for and it's freeing. There you go. We have abundance. Okay. Right? Now this is an abundance of understanding. Yes, it could be money. It could be opportunity coming in for you. But the, the first thing that has to happen here is there are all these shakeups, which really kind of shakes your faith like that. There we go. <laughs> uh, and then this helps open up this abundance. Now, when we talk about acting from integrity, you can't just go barreling over people. Here come the jets. <laughs> uh, you can't just go barreling over people because the karma that comes attached to that is just be like gossiping to get ahead or backstabbing people or, you know, trying to make someone look bad or you're taking advantage of someone right? And then you can't figure out why they're backing away from you and saying, okay, enough. Oh my God, you're such a bad person. You're supposed to be there for me. They don't have to do anything for you. <laughs> okay. Like it's that kind of thing. Or maybe you're having to set a boundary with somebody else. Okay. It very much has that kind of feel. But once all of that sort of works its way out, there's this abundance that can come on in. Yeah. And playfulness. I'm telling you what this feels like is you're going through a week you're being forced to change. You're being forced to look at things that maybe previously you weren't looking at. And it don't be afraid to let go, I guess is what I'm saying. Because this playfulness comes in and says, I'm taking a break. Okay, I'm going to take a break from the pressures of work or what I'm seeing out in the world. Now, when I say what you're seeing out in the world, I don't mean I'm going to stop caring about all the kids that got mixed up and all these horrific moments in the world, okay? I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is I'm gonna take a lighter approach. I am gonna show up and I'm going to serve and I'm going to help, but I need to come from a different mind space and heart space, okay? So let me get one more card here. And listening. I'm telling you, you guys are taking a, a different approach here, very much so. And it might have come from somebody like standing strong in front of you and saying, no, or maybe you're having to stand strong and say, no, <laughs> right? And then you have the capability of not only listening to the messages that are coming in for you, which a lot of you are getting those kinds of downloads, but now you're starting, <sighs> I'm hearing truth, listening to the facts, Hmm. So this has that kind of feeling where some of you may have been pulled down a road around certain circumstances where you're like, no, I know that people are lying to me. I'm maybe even paranoid or whatever that this, that, and the other is happening. And then it's all laid out before you and you're starting to see that's where people got that story from. And that's the, that's the truth behind it. Okay. What are we talking about here? We're talking about truth being revealed. We're talking about how maybe you're catching yourself and realizing how you got pulled down the road of a narrative, whether it's about you, someone else, a situation, what have you. And there's a freeing moment around this where finally you can step back and say, I'm going to listen to my heart. And we want to be careful with that because we see people doing the spiritual sidestepping thing all the time. They're not actually connected into anything. And they're just coming out and saying, I know my intuition is perfect and I know everything and blah, blah, blah. None of us do. If you're in a human body, your intuition is good and it's helpful. But, you know, I mean, you, you still have to go through your third dimensional ego consciousness. Okay. So this is a, yeah, and they're saying it's time to be silent to listen. Now, for you on your path, remember we have this abundance here. So this is a complete reformation a reformation, right? A reformation. <laughs> so you're reforming something and the way you approach it. And so this could be shifting goals. This could be um, finally, because I feel like some of you are coming from this mentality of, you know what? The universe keeps blocking me. 
I keep getting passed over for this job or this promotion or people aren't taking me seriously or I'm in this environment where at every turn someone's trying to gossip and tear me down. Well, I think you get some awareness here and you go, it's time to move on. It's time to find something that I actually feel good about. This could also be some of you standing up against popular narratives because if you notice, it takes nothing to get everyone brainwashed. All someone has to do is come out and say, oh my gosh, I'm offended. That is the worst thing ever. And it could be something that is pretty bad and needs to be fixed, but there's no energy going behind a true solution. It starts to become cancel culture or it starts to become, you know, tiptoeing around each other or what have you. So for you, I think what you're doing here is you're looking for the truth. You're looking for a true way to show up for yourself true way to show up for your path, your purpose. And you're disconnecting from these like surface level arguments and fights that people want to keep engaging in. I, okay. Uh, they're really showing me that people are being puppets. Okay. And it's just so easy to f kind of get caught up in what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to say and how we're supposed to see things. And you're going to see where you've gotten caught up in that. And I think you're going to disconnect and come back away from that. Okay. Again, it's very freeing and that's where we get into this playfulness. Something is getting released here so that you can take that turn, take the turn you've been wanting to. All right. So that is it for you. Let's get on to the next sign. Hi there, Taurus. Let's see what's going on for you. Okay. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Ooh, protection. You know what? This feels like you are becoming this fierce protector and I don't mean fierce in like a negative way <laughs> right I mean like strong focused divine understanding right so this higher wisdom flowing through you and so this is knowing what to say and when uh this is also energy work because well let's go back there's like a sort of truth there it's over here I don't know if that'll pick up but um there's like a sort of truth there. And so a lot of you are truth seekers. And there's going to be something shifting within a lot of you this week where you are maybe doing research, you're digging in, you are looking around, you're asking questions, not in this like gotcha hot take kind of way, which I think <laughs> just might be, I think it's so disgusting. Um, to exploit people who have been through something or who have an opinion or whatever um, or exploit their opinion kind of thing. But this is like you're, you're knowing, kind of hearing that Kenny Rogers song, know when to hold them. How, what are the lyrics? Know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know, know when to run or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but like, this is that kind of thing where you you know what kind of energy to set. Mm. Uh, for everyone, it's different. Okay, so it could be for some of you set by an event, but and for others, it's, it's just kind of an understanding, a subtle realization that happens. But what's really cool about this is that whatever comes up, it might be unpleasant, but you can handle it. I mean, you're not just handling it, you're handling it well to the point where you're like, whoa, that really didn't bother me. Huh, I really don't care what you think of me. Like genuinely, I don't care what you think of me. That's so empowering, right? And so it's almost like you're protecting your own energy, but this protection, there's a protection of truth. There is, and it's not just truth as you see it. This, this doesn't come with like, I just make up the truth in my head and therefore that is the truth, right? This is more, like I say, it's about doing your research and knowing where all that's coming from. So there is that. And then, of course, sending that energy out. I mean, this might come with um, seeing something kind of disturbing or you're understanding the truth behind something that, you know, the, the base narrative was not what it seemed. Um, and you realize this whole time, here are the specifics 
of the people that needed to be protected. Uh, and now you're going to know how to sort of, again, it's being very centered, very grounded and connected, and then letting that, work, uh, that energy go on out into the world. So it's energy work for you. Having said that, this could also lead, there's something about a lot of stability and a lot of um, solutions, figuring things out, things that have been hanging over your head for a while. There you go. That's how I'm going to fix it. <laughs> right? So it's like that. Innocence. You are the protector of innocence. Okay. Think of the children who have come out of war-torn areas, who have witnessed things that no child, or experienced things themselves mentally, emotionally, and physically that no child should ever have to endure. So you are the protector of innocence, and this is you getting your own innocence back as well. Okay, again, they're just showing me that, like, send, send that energy out. So this isn't so that you get depleted. This is more about you just get clarity. I'm telling you, it's, it's deep soul wisdom coming through deep realizations this might even be really opening the door to understanding not just your path but what is <laughs> those deep philosophical questions right check out the archangel raziel seven day meditation challenge if you want to get deep into that stuff that's that's what he helps with but this is you kind of contemplating understanding maybe not the whole meaning of life try again tomorrow i don't know <laughs> but like, or next week or whatever but you're going to you're going to start getting some understanding around how things connect connecting the dots all right again some of you might get very active in um children's charities this sort of thing now if you're like this is a dumb reading i'm not doing that really you, you're not going to sit and do a meditation and send some good energy out to children who've been wounded or you know maybe they're in a bad home situation you can't do that I highly doubt that that's, that wouldn't be the person that would be watching this. <laughs> Grace. If It doesn't matter what your faith is. Think Mother Mary. She's an ascended master. Think Mother Mary. Think Mary Magdalene. Think Quan Yin. Think of these like beautiful grace, compassion, um, you know, ascended masters who have tried to teach us this is how we need to be with one another through grace and harmony. But you're the facilitator for this. So if you're in a place in your life where you're like, I don't feel like I'm so peaceful and harmonious myself, well, then this is that time where you go on that journey. Whether that's trauma healing, do that with a therapist, a professional, a psychiatric professional, um, you know, something along those lines. But we have to learn how to bring some of that nurturing energy forward, okay? Um, what we're gonna find I'm hearing aimless children. There are aimless children out there who need support and love and an undoing of their traumas. Now, I don't know how that works out. They're coming from a spiritual soul kind of perspective. And here we go, guardian angel. So in a way, and only so to speak, even energetically, you're being the guardian angel to someone. I hope I'm about to put this in the correct way. It's almost like sort of spiritually adopting a child. We don't go against free wills, okay? And in a spiritual sense, watching over a child or their energy or whatever, or if you just want to, you know, put that nurturing, loving, caring um, energy out there. So in that way, being a, again, so to speak, guardian angel of um, the innocent, basically of the innocent. Now, this also means that you have quite a bit of protection as well. So get ready for a time where it's like the, the messages don't stop coming in, where you feel, God, don't read into it. Don't let the ego take over and you just want a special spiritual experience so you're contriving it. No, keep open, keep in the flow. I feel guided to go here, then go there. I was in a grocery store one time and a mother snapped at her son and called him a name and then stormed out of the grocery store. And this kid looked so defeated and so, I've used this example before, but he just looked so down and I couldn't help it. I kind of stepped up to him and I said, honey, you're, you're not that. And I'm sorry for whatever you're going through. Like you're definitely not that. Don't anybody ever think 
let you think that that's who you are. And he just kind of looked at me like he didn't know what to do with that and kind of was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. And then he walks on out. You know, it's that kind of thing where sometimes you just need to be there to remind somebody you are worthy no matter what that person says, okay? And that could go for our inner child as well. So you're like the grandmother, the grandfather, um, no, no matter what your age <laughs> or what your association is um, with those energies, you know, or how you kind of blend those energies for you now. Because everybody has that divine feminine, divine masculine within them. And at different times in our lives, we have a little bit more of one or the other, depending on what lesson we're trying to learn. Or there could be a complete melding of the two. You feel me? Um, so no matter what that is, there's still this parental energy coming out. And it will be energetic we're going to start realizing that that is a good way to heal. That is a good way to connect with other people. Heart to heart, soul to soul. I was at a funeral one time and uh, everybody, it was a Catholic funeral. And so everybody's with their rosaries and they're praying. And then when the, the casket was being wheeled out, I'm going to watch my mic here, but I, you know, most people are, you know, doing this and doing the sign of the cross because that's their tradition. And my instinct, my honest instinct was to cross my hands over my heart. That felt like the best, most honoring thing that I could do. And in this church, I was looked at like I was a weirdo. <laughs> right? I was looked at like, what is she doing? Like, what is this? Wait, did, did Catholicism change? And I just, I'm not up on what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I stayed with it. I felt a little bit judged for doing that, but it felt like that whole heart to heart, soul to soul, we're, we're coming out of what we were told is the only way to connect. Or, you know, in this case, I wanted, I wanted to actually bring energy into my heart to open it up so that I could connect and send blessings to the person who had crossed over. So, you know, it is very much that. It's stepping out of the box. It's trying a new way. It's understanding your power in a spiritual way and using it for good. All right. So that's it for you guys. We're going to move on to the next sign. Hi there, Jim and I, let's see what's going on for you. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> we got problems over here. So the card that flopped out is listening. Yeah. I'm hearing feedback. So yes, this could be listening to your spirit guides. Another card flopped out. Um, but I feel like it's like listening to the people around you. Freedom. So listening. Yeah, it's, it's, it's double layered here. So it's listening to spirit and it's listening to messages. You know, messages don't have to be these like profound, like, oh, someone just came up and said something brilliant. You know, it's not that. <laughs> it could just be someone saying, okay, I, I'm going to just stay home tonight. And for the first time. Even though they don't say it, you're listening. And you see that maybe, maybe you've been too rough with them recently. Or maybe they don't trust you anymore. Or maybe, you know, maybe something's going on in their world that they're not comfortable talking about. That's part of listening as well. But again, we have this freedom card. We have ancestors. That's cool. And kindred spirits telling you there's a lot in the way of we're calling it feedback there's a lot of feedback just universal feedback okay and it's time to listen to this because really what's going on now especially for you guys is that you don't have to keep repeating the same same old lessons you can have freedom from this this is the freedom card so this is that week where there might be some hard-hitting revelations um, hard conversations, perhaps, where someone says, hey, you know what? You don't listen to me. You know what? I'm tired of you putting your opinion over mine. It could be something like that. Or maybe you're saying that to somebody else. There's that definitely that kind of, um, yeah, kind of energy around at my cards. I just got these things and because you shuffle, they get a little banged up. Anyway, <laughs> so the freedom, and this is what's going on. And you're learning that there is peace through connection, right? So being able to work things out with other people. So there is some resolution. It does feel very cerebral, okay? It's sort of, 
not necessarily that you've had disagreements, but you just might have someone around you that you don't see eye to eye with, and you finally hear and understand where they're coming from. And there might be some reciprocity there where they finally understand where you're coming from too. So there is that, and it kind of lightens your heart. Now, then we have these cards, ancestors and kindred spirits. Very much so. You're the third one that I am recording, but there's like a big thing about messengers coming close. So ancestors might be getting through to you, but the, the lesson around ancestors, everyone's like, oh, listen to the wisdom of the ancestors. I mean, okay, but don't forget the ancestors had to go through quite a bit too. And they had to go through quite, quite a bit of uh, lesson work on, on a soul level too. So Okay, <laughs> there's a feeling that an ancestor is coming back around. Now, this could be in spirit form. This could be for some of you, um, you know, this wouldn't be someone that you know. You can always bring your grandma around if you want, but this isn't someone you know. This would be someone who's from so far back. And the other thing, too, remember, like, our, like, physical human bloodline How do I say this? Um, that's just the human story. So someone who is painted as your great, 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 grandfather <laughs> on a soul level, maybe not. I mean, you know, we've all had all these different storylines. They're all vibrating at the same time. So, you know, a popular one is when we meditate and someone sees a great grandfather who was a great warrior and he comes in and all this stuff. And it's like, uh, I, I think that can be an energy from a timeline that's coming in with a message. And yes, this could be a kindred spirit who is showing up as a, a great grandfather or whatever. But if you go and talk to your family, you're like, was there like a fierce warrior person? And they're like, no, uh, <laughs> nobody did that. It doesn't matter, okay? The point is, is that there is a kindred spirit that is family, like soul family, that is coming in. Those are your ancestors, all right? Now, every tradition is going to have a different take. There are people who, you know, they studied really, really hard in their spiritual practices and different traditions, and so they stand by that no matter what. We're not, <laughs> not going to look at it any other way, and that's fine, whatever. But um, for all of you out there, I do visitation. I just heard visitation got visitors okay these are like interdimensional yeah we get weird here yes welcome <laughs> uh yeah for some of you there could be visitation and again i feel like this is like a, a kindred spirit it's not somebody who's in this physicality here okay not for everybody i mean it feels like again it's interdimensional could this be some starseed messaging coming through? Absolutely. Maybe they're your kindred spirits. Maybe they're your ancestors. Okay. But again, they're cautioning us against looking at this through a very linear lens. Okay. Um, the universe is bigger than that. <laughs> All right. And somehow, whatever you experience this week, it's going to bring a lot of freedom. So you see how there's like that sort of surface level where it's like, okay, I'm just going to you know, we're going to work this out and somehow that helps you shift enough. And then you have these other experiences coming in. So could it be very otherworldly? Yeah. Could you, for some of you, I mean, maybe you do learn about somebody who was an aunt or something like that. Um, you didn't know them personally, but they're in this human physical timeline, right? Um, and you learn about something that they went through and that story really is jolting to you okay and yeah you i'm feeling like you could have reincarnated if you if you want to call it reincarnation as your own ancestor so let's break that down i have a perfect example years and years ago we we're going through old family photos and i came across one and i jolted i thought it was me I thought it was me. And this woman had a, like a Gibson girl type look going on. No way I would have known her. And I even picked up the photograph. It was old, <laughs> like old. And I picked it up and I said, this is me. Oh my God. You don't think that looks like me? Nobody else thought that that looked like me, but I'm like, that's my face. 
that's me. And I immediately felt myself standing on a, like a porch and I felt very controlled and wanting to break out. Um, I felt that I had expectations put upon me um, and then feeling guilt that I wasn't doing enough for other women who were even more oppressed than I was. Um, it all in like a flash. Now, was that me at that time? And then I reincarnated here, who knows? Or is that me in another timeline vibrating in another storyline? Interesting, right? These might be the things that you're looking at for yourself this week. So work with Archangel Jeremiah if you want to do some past life regression. Or, you know, Metatron with the Akashic Records, you could definitely do that too. It could be really, really interesting for you. All right. So we're going to leave it there for you guys and move on to the next sign. Hi there, Cancer. Let's see what's going on for you. So far, we've gotten very lucky with the Jets. Earlier, they were, I mean, they were coming so close that it was like rattling my apartment. <laughs> I was like, man got a film oh okay okay that would have been fun and special except i accidentally flipped like the whole deck so let's if it's meant to come out again it will but calm down calm down calm down all right <laughs> all right let's see release yeah this is releasing a situation it really frees you uh -huh. abundance yeah you ain't messing around no more you're like i'm done playfulness this came up for i think aries yeah i'm hearing overload like and this could be big stuff this could have been god forbid a divorce this could have been immigration this could have been trying to get home after you know I don't know. I gotta be as always. I'm on YouTube. I gotta be careful what I say, but I feel like there are people still trapped in a certain region. Let's pray for them. Okay, really send them love. Send them a lot of love because they didn't mean to be there. Love. <laughs> okay, so let's break down your story here. I want to feel this out here. Because this playfulness, it has a weak feeling to it. So I'm going to set that there. I don't know what that is. Release. This is the release and the abundance. These are the two that carry the most weight. Well, maybe we'll get a clarifying card for the playfulness and see what's going on there. Because I don't know why, but like it came out and it doesn't have a lot of weight to it. So releasing. I'm going to release myself from maybe surface level situations. I'm going to release myself from pain, um, stress, you know, this sort of thing. There's a lot about self-care going on here for you. So some of you might be very humanitarian types. I would imagine you are. <laughs> and it can get draining, right? And that sense of hopelessness, you see what's going on and you just don't feel like you can do enough. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you just feel like, okay, well, I, I did that fundraiser or I whatever, you know, I, I showed up at the, I work at a nonprofit, you know, but you still don't feel like it's enough. You're releasing all of that now. Okay. And releasing big parts of your story. Yeah. This is huge. This is a huge transformation. Uh, I was saying to some of the other signs, I am going to be having up the, um, Archangel Raziel seven day meditation challenge and Raziel, you'll start to, now that we're getting more and more of the Archangels up on Gumroad, uh, there's some overlap with them and that's fine <laughs> really we're all one being anyway it's just you know uh so don't get thrown by that but uh Razio is also one of the archangels that helps with transformation balanced transformation so make sure you get over there and check that out but what you're doing is you're not giving energy to things that you once did so um putting pressure on yourself to make money putting your pressure on yourself to have a perfect home, um, putting pressure on yourself to be the perfect parent, perfect friend, perfect spouse, right? It, it does have this kind of uh, nowhere to land <laughs> kind of feeling where it's like, I'm just going to break away. Now, this I want to make this distinction. This is not an impulsive thing. This isn't, I'm just going to make the decision right now and run out the door. 
it's not it's a finality it's finalizing things so this my uh I have fuzzies from my sweater it's that time we're getting up on that time <laughs> fuzzies everywhere um where, where you're breaking away from the things that you thought were important it's a whole mindset shift okay so yeah money and stability all of that's important you're realizing um but so is love and happiness and having an open energy. So is spirituality, right? And that's what I'm saying. Like it might feel like you have nowhere to land because you're used to being kind of very solid in here and, you know, taking care of everybody, doing your thing, right? <laughs> and now you're, you're kind of leaping away from that. It doesn't mean that you're not still taking care, especially if you're a parent. I mean, you're still taking care of your kids, but maybe you're starting to let go a little bit, especially if you have teenagers and be like, okay, have we run down all the stupid things not to do? And I mean it, you got it. Okay, I'll let you go out then, <laughs> right? Or what have you. Okay, so then we have this abundance card. Now, this is really, really nice because what this feels like, it does feel like resolution. It feels like things are coming to an end. So for some of you, this could be releasing debt. You're finally free from debt. Did you have a rough couple of years, right? A rough couple of years. Did you constantly worrying about how you were going to take care of yourself? You know, now's the time where you're like, okay, I'm in a free flow now. I'm letting go of all that worry. I'm figuring out solutions. And you really do open the pathway for abundance to come through, which is absolutely beautiful. This is, here, let's get the clarifier for this playfulness card. There is that card. I'm going to hold it up here for a moment. Um, Really? Okay. <laughs> we'll hold this up here for a moment because this might be something to celebrate. And we do have that love card here too. So we're wanting to send love to people all around the world that need it. That's an imperative thing to be doing right now. But for you, the playfulness, like you finally feel like light, like a child. And that is also indicating to me that something, something that was weighing on you <laughs> goes away. Here's wisdom. Yeah, you figure it out. You're figuring things out. I really can't say this enough. It's a lot of things that have just been kind of open-ended, hanging over your head. You're just waiting for the papers to come through. You're waiting for the lawyer to sign it. You're waiting for the person to agree. <laughs> waiting to see what happens with your kids. Waiting to see if your kids actually get accepted into that school. Most kids would have already been accepted to colleges at this point. But um, it, you, you find this peace within. It's like calm, wise you, that higher self. And she says, okay. <laughs> We, we did it. We, we came through the lesson. We're ready to move on. And look at this. We have this love card. So this is an abundance of love coming through you. And yes, could this be you actually connecting with a true love? Sure thing. Just this week alone? I hope if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> but maybe not. Um, this could also be really um, important conversations. So if you have... Oh, a situation where you never had closure. We don't usually get closure these days. Everybody's such a wimp. Nobody wants to sit and actually talk things out. I've been that wimp in the past, but not anymore. Okay. <laughs> now I know how to handle myself. All right. But you know, <laughs> this is that kind of thing where maybe you open up and you have that conversation or maybe it's with a sibling and maybe you had some turmoil with somebody. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. You're coming to peace, but it's from a very, very wise place. I'm telling you, there, there's a big feeling here of like the light sort of turning on all of a sudden for a lot of people. I'm excited about this. There are going to be more storms. There are going to be more threats. There's, um, there, there's some real heavy like world energies. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to put energy into it. But if you're going to be spreading that love and spreading the wisdom energetically, Protect those kids, protect the innocent, and keep praying that war does not break out, that um, people who are the most disconnected from their emotions, that they get to make all the decisions, like pulling back from that. Um, you're a powerhouse. So show up as a powerhouse. And that doesn't mean pushing people around and, you know, bossing them around or whatever. It's energetically, okay? I'm going to offer my love and, and keep it out there. I'm going to... You're going to see what's really important. Yeah. And that goes a couple of different ways, guys. Yes. Could it be? Um, I'll use myself as an example. I'm classic for like pushing love out. I don't know. I'm so like Uranus in my seventh house. Does that mean anything to anybody out there? <laughs> uh, 
Sagittarius, my Venus is in Sagittarius. Does that mean anything to anybody? Um, don't commit. But what's more than that, I always feel like someone's going to come in and distract me. But, you know, maybe like if this were, I have Cancer Moon, so uh, maybe this would be a time where I start letting love in or not avoiding or, you know, that sort of thing. You feel me? Okay, so there's that. Taking pressure off yourself that you have to have all the answers, although you will have the answers. <laughs> You'll have all those solutions coming up here. So yeah, what is Kiss Hand? Ooh, now the wind's picking up. All this ambiance for you. You love it? Okay. <laughs> Background noise. What are you guys saying about this? This is the love card. Hold on one second. Enjoy my ring. Okay, understand having more empathy now, connecting more into your empathy so that you understand better where certain people are coming from and not so much jumping to conclusions or assuming someone doesn't care about you, but they do. Um, or having to love in a different way. And this is gonna be a tough one. So if you come from, let's say, a family environment where it's super toxic and you love your family, but every time you go in there, somebody messes with you and really starts maybe even starts getting abusive and you're always expected to just pretend like it's not there to get along go along to get along kind of thing maybe you start making the decision to love your family you, you love them unconditionally you'll still have a relationship but it's at arm's length i am not taking any more off of you right maybe you're having to make those kinds of adjustments as well all right so we're going to leave it there for you guys have a good week on to the next time Hello, Leo. Let's see what's going on for you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm stuck in my ways. I'm stuck in my ways. That's <laughs> so much of what I feel is coming up. But let's see. We have freedom. Yeah, get yourselves unstuck from your perspective. There's so much fear um, with what I'm feeling here. There's so much fear of losing control or being taken advantage of or not being seen, not being heard, not being appreciated. And I understand all of that. But what this is saying is free yourself from sort of preemptively assuming that you're going to somehow lose or you're going to somehow be left out, right? Right. Playfulness. This keeps coming up and I'm telling you, this has got to be some kind of message of let go, right? Like don't torture yourself. <laughs> ancestors. We've got a lot of this coming up too, where maybe you are tapping into the ancestors. What I was explaining to another sign, who was that? Was that Gemini? Perhaps. I don't remember. But, um, you know, remember what's told to you is your bloodline here on this earth you know, your soul can incarnate in a lot of different ways and it's all vibrating at uh, the same time, okay? So as I was given in that example, I may have incarnated as one of my aunts. Like, or, you know, I was my aunt and then reincarnated here. That's a question. There's one of the jets coming on over. We got so lucky for a long while, but... So messages coming in from your ancestors. Some people really, you know, use that as their spiritual practice. And love. We have love here. So let me just, I'm going to take a moment here. I have the cards on my prayer board to energize them. <laughs> All right. So let me just feel this out one moment. So this playfulness in these ancestors, there's something here. Watch your dreams. Watch your dreams because I think you almost get kind of pulled into a timeline. This could be dimension hopping. I know people are like, if you're a very logistical person, that's going to sound like a weirdo thing to you. Look into it, okay, before you start jumping to conclusions. <laughs> but I do feel like there's a lot of dream work. There's a lot of dream space going on here. I, I'm seeing like intersecting timelines. So watch if you have moments of deja vu or if you have, I, I don't know, there's like a feeling here where someone for a moment thinks that they're back in 1942. Like for a split second, you just feel like that's where you are. And then you look and you're like, where would that even come from? So those are intersecting timelines. 
Okay, so these are shared lessons on various timelines. And the energy will kind of come around and culminate. I don't really understand this, but I'll pass it along as best as I can. When times were simpler, this is an escapism. This is an escapism. This is, um, I almost want, as a human, I want to call these like soul tricks, right? <laughs> Where it's like, wah, 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 I use the law of attraction or wah, 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 I can astral project or do lucid dreaming or visit a past life. It's not really a past. That's a linear way of looking at it. It's a very human way of putting it. Playing in the ethers. Be careful with this if you choose to do that. So whatever your spiritual practice is this week, it does bring answers. So this could be Akashic Records visitation, which remember guys, uh, as just back as of like 2012 and going to 2015, a lot of that, you know, with like Archangel Metatron and the work that I do with angels and all that, it was very like, don't get people going there because there was an immaturity to our spiritual practice. We were doing it so we could have more of an identity. I'm spiritually advanced. I'm a this. I'm an incarnated that. You know, this sort of thing. It was very much that. But we're different now. <laughs> we aren't even the same beings that we were back then. So this is asking you to explore this. Some spiritual practice. You know, maybe again, if you do some dream work, you might... Find yourself in a situation where you're getting solutions. And maybe those solutions are coming from or pulling from um, a different timeline. I don't even know. There you go. It's going to be cool though. I feel like it's really cool. And if you uh, fancy yourself a star seed, it could be very that too. I remember years ago before I ever heard the term star seed, I would have the weirdest dreams. And as a kid too, where I was like on another planet and where I was... There was a pink moon and an orange moon, and they were right next to each other. And they kind of, you know. And I had a startled moment where I completely knew where I was, and I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not supposed to be here, I'm not supposed to be here, not, ah! <laughs> right? And then I would hurry up, and I would feel myself, like, jolting. Those were the times, too. I know you've heard these kinds of stories before, or you have experienced it yourself, where I would have a dream like that, and then I would find myself up at the ceiling, like looking down at my body and I could even go through the house. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, people, if you know, you know, right? Um, people would go through, or I could go through my house and see that my brother got to stay up late. And if you think I did not have a conversation with my parents the next day, I'm like, why do I have to go to bed at this time? But he got to stay up and they're like, you were asleep. How did you know he was still up? I just know things. You know, my nephew's starting to do that stuff now. <laughs> We'll pass it along to him. All right. So then we have freedom and love. There is freedom in a love approach. Now, we always want to be balanced. This is, I think, the biggest thing that we're all confused about in a duality consciousness. We think that dark is bad, light is good. Light by itself, on the downside of it, if there's a downside to the light, it would be uh, not being motivated. No drive, just peace and harmony and flow and whatever. The severe expression of darkness, we know how bad that can get. But when the light tempers the dark, there is no evil. The light prevents it. So it's not about escaping the dark and running into the light. It's about being balanced and harmonious. So now you do have your drive. You do have clarity and focus and all that not that that's dark but I'm just saying like it, it does kind of the two energize one another right it's all the principles of a lot of spiritual practices and philosophies out there but what do most of us do in our spiritual practice run to the light and what happens and why we see these people they come off as fake they're not grounded these are the people that are saying you can't be spiritual if you get upset or I'm just gonna pretend like nothing's going on in the world. There are no children being harmed right now. It's all good, as long as I'm happy in a beautiful space out in nature, it's all good. Not good enough, right? So that I think is kind of what you're understanding is you're like embracing, we talk about the shadow work and all that stuff, um, but balancing and harmonizing. 
and bring that right into the space of the heart and it empowers the heart right and of course it's connecting with the the gut brain the brain brain <laughs> like all of it is online and now we're in alignment and your entire electrical system right your chakra system is in alignment and flowing okay so i feel like that's what i have for you guys well, let's get on to the next sign all right virgo let's see what you have going on for this week Curious to see if freedom comes out for you. This wants to come out. No, it's strength. <laughs> but I, I feel like it's like you're standing up for yourself more. And I know a Virgo who's been standing up for themselves a bit more. It's been gentle, but you know there have been people that have been walking all over this person for a very long time. And finally, they put their foot down and said, not doing that anymore. But I feel like this, for most of you, that strength card, um, I'll just hold it up now. The strength card is really teaching you what the true meaning of strength is and people seem to think that strength is being a bully or strength is fighting or being i don't know confrontational no strength sometimes is walking away strength sometimes is shutting it down you will not speak to me that way and then you go and that's it <laughs> okay beauty yeah there's beauty in your strength and you are discovering it so for a lot of you it is about boundaries and the beauty uh, within you and the beauty of you learning how to protect your energy a little bit better feeling like everybody expects you to be there for them this might be a little some of you not all of you some of you might be feeling like a doormat okay like you're feeling like a doormat and you're just like it's just not good enough anymore I'm just not doing this and celebration there's a celebration in your transformation so there might be a win for you in your neighborhood for example is this the time that you get to take the masks off you know uh what have you and even if that's not it I, there's something that you're celebrating you're proud of yourself for not giving into something um yeah and i'm hearing preserving your beauty and that doesn't mean, doesn't have to mean physical beauty. That has to do with honoring yourself. Honoring yourself. And that's your strength. That's your courage. So we'll see. I'm going to get one more card here and then I'm going to tune in and see what this might be. And gratitude. Oh my God. You guys, you're free of something. I'm telling you, you're free of something. Maybe it's a way of being a pattern, an addiction for some of you. Get proper help with the proper professionals okay if that is the case but this is like really having gratitude for everything that you've been through but we're done right it's like I'm, I'm happy for the lessons but we're gonna gonna sum those up wrap it up because <laughs> we want to move on and enough is enough as I said so let me just tune into these cards here it's a lovely time it's a putting things to rest mm -hmm. but you tapping into your strength and, and to yourself and taking care of you energetically, mentally, emotionally, physically, honoring yourself enough to say no, but saying no gratefully and graciously. Okay. So it's like, thank you for your concern, but I, I'm not going to be taking that advice. Uh, thank you for showing up, but you can go home now. You guys ever have like a friend who's supposed to help you move and they show up and they've just added way more work they're not doing anything yeah uh you know it's, it's stuff like that but it's setting boundaries it is setting boundaries and there's this huge transformation here i mean obviously this deck has so many flowers and butterflies it's a thing right <laughs> but this is very striking those butterflies on there are incredibly striking so i'm gonna be me without your permission and i will not be apologizing it's that for some of you, if you are considered, because it has this feeling of like somebody who's supposed to be in like an authoritative position. So either a boss, a parent, a teacher, oh, somebody who, uh, you know, whatever, they're supposed to be in a higher position, but nobody respects you. And they think that you're just going to always be there for them and that it's like, like you were put on this earth to serve them. And you're finally saying no. And you're, it's not just saying no and setting the boundaries. It's what comes after that. 
which the wind's picking up, sorry. <laughs> it's crunching everything. Um, it, it's what you learn after that, which is your self-worth. Not that you don't have self-esteem, but you're starting to acknowledge your own beauty. And it's not in this narcissistic way, which is all insecurity anyway. This is how I am, is exactly how I need to show up. What I'm experiencing is exactly a part of the plan. I am functioning in a human body the best way I can. And there's beauty in that too, right? So there's all this sort of um, like very beautiful kind of settled energy. I'm going to let myself be where I am. If you are single, I am going to love myself. I am going to, and I know people roll their eyes at that, but seriously, sit with that and feel how amazing it feels to go, I'm single and that's fine. <laughs> oh my God, there's no pressure now to look a certain way, to go out and get somebody or whatever, right? Or, you know what, I'm not going to keep seeking and trying to figure out my path when my path is right here, right now doesn't mean that you don't have to make a change on your path later on. But sometimes if you've been pushing and pushing and pushing to make a change on your path and you're seemingly getting this like pushback from the universe, it's time to embrace where you are and have gratitude for where you are. Okay. So let this be a settled time for you. It is a happy time. It is a time of celebration. There's always something to be grateful for and something always to celebrate it just may not show up in the way that you expect. You've heard this before, right? It's going to be a good time. Some, something nice is happening. Something is going to change everything. So we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to the next sign. Hello, beautiful Libra. Let's see what's going on for you. My hair feels weird. <laughs> what's happening? I have to have a little mirror here because I don't have somebody filming for me. It never works. I usually still have a curl sticking out. Something crooked lipstick <laughs> anyway back to you let's see what we have okay here we go okay we have gentleness with like the freaking ghost bride Gentleness, guardian angel, ah, okay. Discernment, here's what I felt before we go any further. I felt like this was a very like, like I actually see somebody storming into a room and closing the door and locking it and then going, ugh, <laughs> everybody Shut up. Leave me alone. Right? It's one of, one of those moments. And I don't know that this is like a shocking, oh God, I hope it isn't like you're about to get married and you get cold feet and you run. Don't do that. Okay. Don't run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're there. Do your thing. Okay. So this has to do with, okay, I need a break. I need to unplug. I need to collect myself. Yes. Um, yeah, because it does feel very like internal work. So let me tell you this. If you are having that kind of time where you just keep feeling like you're running on empty, I mean, obviously check with a professional, check with a doctor, or check with a psychologist, make sure there's no depression or some physical ailment or something going on, right? So double check with that. But, you know, if, if nothing like that is going on and you're still feeling this, that can be sort of your energetic and spiritual battery running down. So you pause find some alone time and meditate. This is going to be really imperative for you because in the process of doing this, you, yeah, because your guardian angels are going to come through because you, some of you do have quite the energy drain going on. For some of you, it is a work situation, but you can't just look at that or even if it's a relationship or whatever, you can't just look at that and say, it's this situation's fault or it's this person's fault and I got to fix this situation before I can be happy. That's not really how or why those things will show up. I know it's rough and I totally feel you human to human. It's like, really? Cause it feels like that's the obvious thing that I got to work on, but really it's teaching you uh, a different approach, a different investment, 
right? investment of energy, um, that sort of thing. So there will be some big messaging coming through for you guys um, in this coming week. And the reason why I kind of hit pause on this because we have this discernment card. And I immediately felt like this was like, oh my gosh, I have a sudden realization about someone. It doesn't have to be bad. It can also be very, very freeing, but it might scramble you for a moment where, you know, it's that kind of feeling where you're like, well, I've always thought of that person as my friend. I thought I could trust them. And then you have this sudden realization, wait a minute, every time I'm around them, they do this, this, and this, which is very self-serving. Wait a minute. I never hear from them until they want something. And then they think that they're going to come in and like basically invade my life with their life choices. Right? So it's that kind of discovery. Let's see what you do with it. <laughs> Let's see what you do. Oh, you ain't messing. That's playfulness. It's been coming up for like every sign. Weird. Okay. But anyway, it, you're letting something come to its natural conclusion. And you could approach this very, very playfully where it's like, <laughs> you guys know I'm not into that, you know, so no, I'm not going to drop everything to take care of whatever. No, I'm not doing it. Um, or... For some of you, I know it's very specific, but for some of you out there, it feels like you're like invited, if, uh, very specifically feels like a girl's trip, but really it was your plan in the first place and somebody, like some mean girl or whatever kind of took over the plans and now she's running everything and inviting whoever she wants. It's okay for you to step back and say, no, I'm not doing that. I did that, oh God, years ago. I had this very, before I realized what kind of person she was, I had this very toxic best friend. And our birthdays are around the same time. And so she's like, oh my gosh, you and I should go off into the mountains. I think we were going to go out to Breckenridge. And let's just hang out there and have a little girls weekend, whatever. She then took it over. It stopped being about me and both of our birthdays, like me and her together. And it became my birthday this, my birthday that. Now her husband is going, who's a cool guy, cool guy, cool guy to hang out with. But now he's coming. Okay, now she's bringing her teenage son. I didn't mind, like, but now it's becoming something else. Now I'm an accessory to the family vacation and it's not, and now I have no say in anything. So what I did in that situation was I was pretty much done with that friendship. And so I disconnected and said, you know what? Never mind. I will go off and celebrate my birthday on my own. And I think she got, it's a long story after that, but, you know, she kind of felt that I was pulling away. She tried to pull me back in. That's what covert narcissists do. But this is that kind of thing that I'm talking about here, that first part of it, where you, you start to understand how you have been functioning. Great clarity here. It's going to be very, like, like a relief that you're figuring something out, right? So it's nice. It's, it's very freeing. But this might come with a disappointment, a, a letdown, a realization about somebody where you're like, I got to walk away from this. I can't. I cannot. So again, the exit strategy could be playfulness, but you got to be careful with that because then somebody might not take you seriously. You feel me? Or it's like, I'm going to not go on that girl's trip because I know how it's going to be. Princess Boo Boo over here is going to just call all the shots and tell us what we're going to do. <laughs> day in and day out I totally made that up could, could you figure that out that I just made that up yeah let's just make it a thing put it on a t-shirt tell your friends all right but then you go off and you you don't let anybody ruin your happiness and I think that's what this playfulness card is talking about you know what that person or the, those people are trying to drag me down or this situation's really been getting to me and I can just let that go and play out the way it needs to and I'm going to go enjoy my life it's very that. Now, don't do that by stomping on someone else. This is a far different thing. Like if you're like, yeah, my husband, all he does is sit around and watch sports. I've had it. <laughs> you order your own buffalo wings. I'm out of here. <laughs> Poor husband sitting there going, but I thought you were going to watch the game with me. What? Like, you hate this? You never told me you hated this, right? <laughs> so let's not be mean to people. But again, it's the discernment. It's discerning. Like if you don't have a good feeling around someone, Figure out why. Now, this might be, listen, as a Scorpio, a November-born Scorpio, we are mirrors to people, okay? And so sometimes, like, girl, I just showed up and got a coffee. I don't know why you're mad at me. Like, because you're mad because I'm a mirror and you don't like what you see. So that could be one scenario. But if you feel like, you know, someone just feels really toxic and, like, they talk about people and then they, you know what I mean? Like, it's, 
it's not it's not great you figure out a way to get yourself out of that situation and I'm telling you whatever this is or however it kind of forms for you it is a relief it's a beautiful thing okay so we're gonna leave it there for you and get on to the next sign hello Scorpio let's see what is going on for you you see that Ooh, enchantment you know what I feel like um maybe it's because we're coming into our birthday season <laughs> like a month away or so um like we're really I'm a Scorpio too still am Scorpio that's why I'm saying we uh from the western perspective on astrology but this enchantment feels like the coming months here in the northern hemisphere it would be fall um we're tapping into what could be now hang with me as I say this when this I didn't even hold it up did I uh this enchantment card it is create create <laughs> I got this we're, we're, <laughs> we'll figure this out okay <laughs> all kinds of things happening off camera here and a fuzzy whatever hi enchantment so this is tapping into what could be this is where people do start to get into esoteric art or um creative projects maybe you're nesting in your home you really want to give it a deep clean uh this can also come with a little bit of fear too because re remember enchanted fairy tales yeah there's an enchantment about them but sometimes there's a dragon too <laughs> right and maybe it's not a friendly dragon so there's a lot of dichotomous kind of feeling here where it's like I'm being strong everything's fine but there's a fear in the back of my mind <sighs> Scorpios are famous for constant transformation how many lives have you lived in this one right how many expressions have you gone through how often do you have people say I don't even know who you are anymore like you are so different you're so <laughs> <laughs> whatever and and yeah that could have us looking like we're a little disconnected or that we're not authentic which is about the biggest bs you could possibly come up with we are we are truth seekers and truth speakers okay <laughs> and people don't always like that but there is a charm about you there is something that you are able to create there is something that is coming to fruition there is something that steals your heart oh lord okay listen we'll get more cards <laughs> this could be uh past life stuff things uh that's been coming up for a lot of people but this could be like a like a soulmate yeah like a soulmate coming in but be careful you don't want the love bombing because that's toxic you can have a soulmate who is toxic <laughs> okay they're here to teach you to not put up with toxicity can have that sort of thing going on but great for creative ideas and getting them down your wisdom sharing your wisdom now a lot of times our wisdom can be um here's my life experience and here's what I learned from it as a spiritual practitioner I can tell you numerous times I have had people in the in the way that they're trying to process their own pain um, instead of healing themselves they want to jump ahead to writing their memoirs because their name that nobody's ever heard is going to sell. Oh, sorry to get all markety on you, but there you go. Um, and, there, and it's more about just telling and kind of complaining. I know some of the stuff that I've seen, the way it's been done, it's not like coming at it with the intention of, I want to share this because I bet someone out there, I wish someone had told me this before I went through it. So if I tell this story, perhaps you'll understand and you can have a better life. Not a lot of people are coming at it from that perspective. It's, do you want to know more about me? This one time I had to take a red car instead of the blue one that I wanted. And that was really hard for me. These self-indulgent, like, <laughs> I just want to write a book so I can say I wrote a book. You know, I mean, that's what that's what we're not doing okay let's not it's gross okay but <laughs> if you can take a story and again anything that you have experienced if you can incorporate it into that story or if you actually have healed and this is how you discovered how to come out of it that's helpful to someone right um just loving the the story of your own life not the same thing 
Okay. <laughs> kind of laid it down there, didn't I? Welcome to being a Scorpio. Kindred spirits, I'm telling you, here comes the soulmates. I'm a Scorpio too. You think I'm not going to sit here and get more information on this? <laughs> what are we in for? One minute. Not bad. They're saying it's not bad. <laughs> Or soulmates coming back, making amends. Okay, so expect the unexpected, I would dare say. I would say someone comes swooping in. You thought that situation was done, over. Here it comes again. Now, some of you might be going, uh, mm, mm. I'm not answering your phone call. If you feel like it was a toxic person who, God forbid, could cause you any harm, then no, don't, don't go down that road. This could, yes, be a new soulmate, but it's an old energy, which means, which is to say <laughs> that here comes, you know, karmic cycle number 1,500,000 um, about learning how to not take nonsense off of someone and to value yourself. You know, it could be something along those lines, but yeah, i telling y'all, yeah, kindred spirits, maybe finding your tribe. This could be making a nice new friend. Um, and I, in this day and age, I think the most precious gift is a good friend, right? So, cause it's really hard to come by, um, and a good love partner, which is also more and more feeling kind of difficult to connect with because really in our society, we're so fine with being attracted by pain bodies and going into dynamics and even procreating in those dynamics because we're trying to find our healing in another person. So it does take a really brave soul to walk that path alone in this world. Um, I'm telling you, this is book deals. This is, it's, it's a myriad of things. It's like a past soulmate person coming back in to help you learn some of your patterns. Be careful with that. Resolution. Figuring things out. This has been a big running theme, it seems, with everybody. But it's like... I see where I have been trying too hard or I see where I've not had the best intentions. I hate to admit that, but I didn't have the best intentions. I want to mean something in this world and that's why I was going after that thing. Or I've been pushing too hard to have that person in my life. Oh, great. Now I got to show you this. <laughs> the patience card. Nobody likes it. The, the little girl's cute though. Look at her. She's so cute. Um, but she's hiding and it is very much that, oh, are you serious? So this could be that kind of thing. <laughs> this would be, these are just weekly, week spans, right? So this would be the kind of thing where like your book doesn't get published maybe this week, but you get notice that someone wants to work with you. Or maybe you don't start that job this week, but you get notice that somebody wants you to come back for a second interview, right? Uh, you're not going to get married this week. Well, maybe some of you obviously are getting married this week. <laughs> and if so, congratulations. Um, but it's that kind of thing. It's like the breakthrough initial moment. I'm wearing a fuzzy sweater today. It could be that breakthrough moment where things are getting started or you see the path beginning to open. It's a very beautiful time, or it could be. Remember, th this is not to speak to the atrocities that are happening in the world or the atrocity. We're learning the truth about Afghanistan. Yeah. And I know I've seen some of the truth and I, I'm appalled. I, I really had to contain myself, the stuff that I saw and understood. But, um, you yeah, know, so I'm not really talking about that necessarily. That's in the general weekly or the weeklies to come. But this is more about how are you going to allow yourself to transform this time? This is really gonna challenge your thinking. It might make you have to realize that you have to believe in yourself, that you can't keep avoiding because you're just so set in your ways. You feel me? Um, or if it is a love partner coming in that, you know, maybe it's time to Finally let go of the past. See, this is, I'm telling you, this enchantment thing. <laughs> um, someone, here comes the jets again. Um, this does feel like someone kind of comes in and they're laying it on a little thick. They're laying it on a little thick. And 
always watch out for love bombing, but maybe they don't mean to love bomb. They're just so afraid of doing it wrong. Like I get the feeling like you don't understand how much thought they put into what they were going to say to you and how they wanted it to be so perfect because they don't want to scare you away um, or something, right? That's like a love example. But this could also, like I said, this could be a really, really good friend coming in. And finally, you're feeling supported. But don't take advantage of that. See, that might also be you trying to enchant the new friend because you're just so grateful that there's a new friend. <laughs> you don't want them to go away and you want them to like you. So maybe you're like, yeah, let's go out. I'm usually in bed by 10, but okay. No, I'm fun. It's great. Let's do this, right? <laughs> just be yourself and everything else will fall into place. All right, so we're gonna leave it there for you guys and get on to the next sign. Hi there, Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on for you for this week. Remember that these are in fact timeless. So whenever you do see this, it's the next seven days or so. All right. Okay, first up, union. That's interesting. It, it says union, but it feels like union of like higher self with 3D self. Interesting. And she has this like yellow aura. There's yellow, what is this? Yellow and pinks. Blue is kind of out there on the edge there. But this is some serious deep understanding about you your place in this world and how you can be at one with yourself. Dreams, yeah, this is some deep work. All right, this might be a little bit of an exhausting week for you. I'm telling you. Ugh. Wait, hold, let me get this whole thing because I'm hearing, <sighs> hearing a lot of things here. So in order for you to come together in this higher aspect, right, to kind of unify, unify the, <laughs> the two, there's going to be quite a bit coming up in your dream state. So you might have like really, really weird, vivid dreams. Don't obviously dream, dreams are not literal. Yes. So when you wake up, I hear this all the time. I don't remember my dreams. Well, you remember how you feel, right? So you can ask yourself, where does that come from? And then whatever comes up in your mind or whatever, if you get a flash, a vision, what have you, take it from there. Let's say you're having a dream of a, totally making this up, like a giant sock with eyeballs is chasing you. And <laughs> you might have to go, okay, that was just weird. Write it down anyway. You might be surprised. You might be, the socks are a cover up. Their cover up, um, you know, where do you feel like you have to hide, you know, or um, maybe a sock reminds you of a time in junior high where you had gym class and everybody bullied you or whatever. You know, I mean, they could have more of a meaning than you think. Yeah, you're working towards grace here. That is the deal. And so anything that comes up that is trying to pull you off path, trying to get you, trying to shake you up and trying to get you to really fall down, there's this realization of, I'm not going to go there. And I want to make it clear this grace is just that. It's grace. It's not self-righteousness. It's not virtue signaling. It's not saying I'm above this. Blah, blah, blah. It's not any of that. It's just saying, you know, that's just not who I am. And it doesn't lead to my highest good or happiness for me or for you. And we're just not doing this. Abundance really keeps coming up for a lot of signs. There is that too. So what are we looking at here? If you allow this union to happen within you okay ultimately it could lead to abundance or news of abundance a way to go a way to open your heart yeah for some of you it really is honoring the relationship you have with yourself it, it is just that and uh this could be very much of a processing kind of we again watch uh, watch how things come up in your dreams because you're leaving the past behind. So if you do some dream programming and you make sure you meditate before you go to sleep, this is how 
you'll be able to realize these things and let them go. And that really opens the path up for you. So what this feels like, it's an abundance of freedom, relief, happiness. There are planes everywhere, sorry. <laughs> but what this is really getting at here, it's not like everything's gonna be perfect for you. You might have things happen or something you hear on the news is really upsetting. But your internal work, where you are, everybody's on a different place on their path, but for each individual, there's something there that is time to be done with. Okay. Maybe you are learning how to appreciate another person's presence. How many have isolated? How many are empaths and you're just like, you know what? I can't be around people. I just can't. Every time I try to connect with somebody, they take advantage or um, they siphon off of me and I'm tired of it understandable but this might be the time where you start to see around that where you realize I can still go on and live my life and get out there I just don't have to leave my energy open to people who would take from me right it's that kind of feeling so really approach this time with grace integrity dignity and abundance is going to follow here I'm telling you it feels like an abundance of love for some, uh, but definitely it could be prosperity, you know, it could be new opportunities opening up for you. But first and foremost, the opportunity is how you envision, how you show up, how you feel about your own life. Do you get, you know, all wound up on the surface level? Do you feel sorry for yourself and say, oh, why don't I have this, this, and this in my life? You know, all those kinds of things. This is where you're coming to some deep realization around this. And you're going to sleep peacefully. Dreams are going to be vibrant and very telling. I'm excited to see what comes up for you. Comment down below. <laughs> so we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to the next sign. Hi there, Capricorn. Let's see what is going on for you. What? Stop and settle. I don't... <laughs> It has this feeling of like, stop torturing yourself, like settle down, <laughs> right? <laughs> so some of you are pushing way too hard. You've been going too hard. This could have been like where you had like a lot of plans, whatever, divine timing. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. And look, there's a, what are those called? Quills. Um, he's writing something. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but you know, it, it might be that you're trying to create some project or messaging, processing everything. It's like writing your soul's contract. It's just not time yet. And so whatever you keep pushing, pushing, pushing on, instead of getting frustrated and giving up, just know there are other things that have to fall into place before you can get what you want. And you might even discover that what you wanted is not in your highest good or it wasn't what you were built for, <laughs> right? Um, maybe the goals that you've created have been based on what this world would honor and gives you presence. Have gratitude. Have gratitude that you have more time to finish whatever it is that you're wanting to do. So don't rush on a project, especially if it, if it literally is a writing project or a report you got to write or something like that. Take your time and have gratitude that you can have this gift of time. Don't push. Don't push, don't rush. This card has come up for almost every single sign. It is playfulness. So for you guys, it is very much saying lighten up. Don't take things so seriously. I mean, this almost feels like, like some of you might be doing some unscrupulous things to get ahead. Not too many of you, just a couple of you. <laughs> and you're trying to change your ways and I get it, but there, have gratitude uh, for that gift of discovery. Like, why is there so much pressure there? Why do you feel like you have to do it that way? It is inviting you to kind of unplug from whatever situation you're under. So let's say maybe you have the luxury of taking a break from something, okay? Let's say I saw pottery and I saw painting, fine. So let's say you are an artist of that type and um, you say, you know, I've just been going so hard. I'm trying to just make and make and make. I need to rest and rejuvenate. And you might find yourself going down for a week. <laughs> like you're just like down for the count and you're sleeping. You know, of course, check with a doctor and a psychologist, make sure nothing serious is going on. But 
there was another sign that got the message of recharge your batteries. But what you're doing is you're pushing on things and you're pushing towards the wrong goal. You don't have all the information and you're going to want to put your energy into something else. So it could be you, okay, maybe let's keep with the writing because there was that he's writing something. If you're writing a book and you're pushing it a direction, pushing a direction, or you're really pushing to get that agent or you're really pushing to get a publisher and um, it's just not working. Well, maybe you rest and then you get this huge epiphany of, I don't want that type of book. Maybe I should be writing fiction instead of nonfiction. Or you feel me? It's like you get inspired to go a different direction, which kind of unleashes your creative flow. Okay, and intuition. Here's the deal. Your intuition has been telling you that you're barking up the wrong tree, right? You're barking up the wrong tree. For some of you, this could be with a love partner as well. Um, you know, people do it. They go for people because of their looks or because of what they might represent or what they could provide. And your intuition is telling you, no, 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 this isn't the way to go. And you're not going to realize that yet because I do feel, again, there's, there's this whole learning process. And so you're still going through a lot of lessons um, before that inspiration strikes or the solution comes. But in the meantime, we have playfulness. So don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself. The more you do that, the more you work against yourself and the more you block what's trying to come through. Yes. So you can still work a little by little on something, which I think a lot of you like to do anyway. Uh, maybe you do like the process as much as the outcome. <laughs> okay, but um, there needs to be more joy in your life. So some of you, this could be someone who's being a workaholic, um, being a workaholic and you know at some point you're going to crack or a relationship's going to crack or you're going to lose another opportunity or something because this really is kind of for some small percentage of you out there, watch being obsessed over something like you get so goal driven that you're like obsessed with you know the process and getting there and having your outcome and your intuition is going now you know that's not what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> right? and so just be careful with that um, definite risk of burnout if you don't kind of come within and balance things out you know do a gratitude exercise get out into nature and have fun yes Go out and have fun. There's going to be a heck of a lot going on out in the world. And it's no joke. Make the most of what you have. Everything else, yeah, like I said, you're going to need more information before you can have some sort of completion. Okay? So we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to the next sign. Hi there, Aquarius. Let's see. Oh, Lord, we got a card already. Let's see what's going on for you. <laughs> Listening. You know what I, I'm telling you? If you guys are watching for your sun, moon, rising, maybe even Venus in midheaven, signs you're going to see a lot of overlap with the cards i think the camera's low enough that you can see me shuffling i do have to work around this microphone here but a lot of people are like it's time to listen the way we have been functioning is we get told a narrative we get wound up and like little toys we just start repeating whatever we were programmed to say and then we wind down and we wait for someone else to come and jazz us up again so that we can start functioning and performing, right? So this is that kind of time where we're having to break away from that. We are having to look at things for what they actually are. Now we have people who are very split. We have people who are completely over here, you know, they're trying to be whistleblowers, but they don't have all the facts. And we have people over here who say, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> This is really being here and listening, listening to your own intuition, listening to your heart. And also listening when other people are like, like if you've been a little too cold with people, you might be hurting them. And you don't get to just explain away that hurt as, oh, they're too sensitive, right? That's part of listening too. There's going to be a lot of things reflected back to you where people are like, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Depends on your specific situation, but you know, it could be kind of a wake up call where, hey, I, I can't just keep, you know, going on in this way. I'm 
hurting people in the process or I'm upsetting people or whatever. Okay. So we have here grace. This has been coming out quite a bit as well. This is you finding your grace and connecting with your grace. This one to come out with it. New beginnings. I feel like this is heavily around communication and how you come off and how you portray yourself. I don't think that that moved the camera, but I swear to you, I just felt the ground shake. It was subtle. I just felt the ground shake. <laughs> in, in the book that I'm writing, there is an earthquake and everything that I write seems to come to fruition. It's really bizarre. Oh, I should write like, I should get this hot man coming in. <laughs> This hot man who comes in and loves her no matter how old or fast she gets. Okay, back to you. New beginnings. This is what you're prepping for. <laughs> this is what you're prepping for. You can't get into this next chapter until you find, again, your grace. And you find your grace by discovering where do I get defensive? Um, where do I get, how shall I say this, self-focused? And I don't know that that's self-centered. It's not that. It's almost the feeling of being so uh, fearful of letting people down or being so fearful of being seen in a certain way and not wanting to have to like fight back or something. I don't know. It's like avoiding conflict sort of. Anyway, you're going to be processing. People are going to have a lot to say to you and you really, instead of getting defensive, it's been, like I said, it's been coming up for a lot of signs. Instead of getting defensive, you're going to have to listen and understand because there's some truth coming at you. But if you do that, there is a fresh beginning. There is a fresh beginning and maybe even a reconciliation between people or you feel better about the work that you do or you get inspiration or something along those lines. I love this card. Innocence. Very much so. Innocence. And... I just heard, where do you push out your innocence? Where do you push it away? That's what this is. You might see innocence as a weakness or naivete and you say, nope, I'm not going to go down that road. I am not going to be seen that way. I'm not going to be seen as somebody who's da, 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 da. But if you, if you notice here, this is all about tuning up your heart, tuning up your heart. And healing the inner child. I think for a lot of you, this is having to heal past trauma. And you've had a hard time connecting with people, perhaps some of you, in a very organic, uh, very authentic way. Maybe you're defensive. Maybe you're overanalyzing. Maybe you're diminishing. Maybe, you know, whatever. Whatever people do to push others away because you're afraid of feeling something. This is a big message for some of you. Now, if you're sitting there going, not me, not me, not me. Well, aren't you living a charmed life? It's most humans. We all have moments, okay? <laughs> You're not perfect. But it, even if that isn't exactly how it's happening for you, there is something along those lines where it's like, here's this thing that I never healed. Here's this thing that I thought I could handle, but truly I need help. Someone help me. It's all right to step up and ask for help, okay? Now, some of you... Um, in your workplace or whatever you do, even if you're retired, maybe, you know, you're helping out with a project or something, something comes along here where you find um, peaceful resolution. Now, I wanted to use the example of someone being a boss. Now, I know not everybody out there is a boss to others or their own boss, but let me just go with this example. It's like you finally listen to your people and what they don't like you approach it with grace and harmony, and now there's a new beginning. Now there's a new beginning, and people are kind of starting fresh, right? Clean slate. Now, I'm not talking about indulging, entitled, uh, self-absorbed, greedy employees. Oh my God, work sucks. I should show up and do the minimum and get paid three times what anybody else has ever gotten paid in this position. Or, you know, if you run like a service type thing and you have people who are like tip greedy, you know, they, they do one thing and they expect a 40% tip. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're not talking about being an enabler here. We're talking about, um, again, there's this word resolution here, understanding 
And what's nice too is like you're able to say what you need to say so that you can be understood as well. This is incredibly heart opening. Very much so. I mean, we have new beginnings and innocence here. I mean, it really does break things open. And it's that kind of thing where it's like, I didn't even realize how much that was affecting me until I fixed it. <laughs> and now I feel so good. I pop out of bed in the morning, ready for the sunshine, ready for my coffee or tea or whatever, you know, and I just feel good about the day. Um, it, it really is that it's subtle. It's subtle and it's not anything the intellect is going to be able to have any sort of power over. It's heart center. Okay, so we're going to leave it there for you guys and get on to the next group. Hi there, Pisces. Let's see what is going on for you. I'm hearing ignorance, ignorance. And I see someone yelling at somebody else. So I don't know if that's you getting yelled at or... Um, you yell at somebody else or if that's supposed to be metaphorical where you're just seeing things and you're just, your processor is smoking. Okay. Like it's smoking. It's out of control. The, the gears are popping. Like, <laughs> you're just like I can't with this world. The ignorance, the ignorance. This is definitely a time to stop and check yourself. Okay. There's going to be a little bit of, um, you don't know everything. Okay. Um, or your viewpoint isn't the only viewpoint, but there's something that's going to really get you fired up. Definitely fired up. So make sure you're managing that and finding your harmony. Yes. So I think what this is saying is don't scare people off that you might be able to have a conversation with. Even if they don't agree with you, that's okay. Or, you know, if somebody's getting in your face, eh, if they want to short circuit, that's on them. But you don't need to participate in that. <laughs> okay. So striving. Oh, got two cards coming out at once. All right. And healing and thought. All right. So this is definitely, I would say meditate, of course, always, that's always the thing, <laughs> meditation, but there could be some real, this is the thought card. This could be like a real moment of like, I never thought of it that way. Oh, well, or, you know, I got to watch my thoughts. Maybe you catch yourself having some very toxic or dark thoughts or whatever, and you realize, okay, I need to heal this. Now, this always cracks me up because it looks like two gigantic medicine bottles behind her. Um, and maybe some people would associate that kind of medicine with healing. I would associate it with addiction. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is realizing I could live a less tortured life if I stop sticking to my guns in that area so much. Or, you know what it is? Make sure you get proper support if this is something that pertains to you. Like get with a psychologist or therapist or, you know, something along those lines. But this is having that kind of thing where it's like you start to have repressed memories cracking open. It could be that. And you know it's time to go to a professional. This is not a replacement for therapy. Are you kidding me? It's not a replacement for therapy. Um, you know, you realize, okay, it's time to heal that. It's time to heal that. I'm now suddenly having this like random memory hanging out there and all this like, it, it, it's like having a locked up chest of memories and the spiders start kind of coming out. They're making their way out somehow. And you're like, all right, I gotta crack this thing open see what other gross things are in here, <laughs> you know? And that's why you need to have support as you do this. Um, I'm telling you, it, it's like you're making a decision to be harmonious. You don't wanna live like this anymore. Right? So again, I, I'm put in a very dramatic way, but it could be small things too. Um, I don't want to hold myself back anymore. I don't want to put pressure on myself to make X, Y, and Z happen if it doesn't make me happy. It's that sort of thing. Surrendering. Look at this. You're not running from your problems anymore. You are no longer going to be in denial. You are going to get help. I hope you do. I hope you do. Because you don't need to suffer. You do not need to suffer. And I'm just I'm just seeing like your thoughts are finally like kind of pecking at you and saying, come on, come on. Let's not wait any longer. We've kept stuffed inside long enough. And maybe you have used your work to funnel your creative energy or your focus or whatever. Or maybe 
you get um, obsessed with stardom because that's an incredible and very long lived kind of distraction, isn't it? Right? And now you're saying no. No, no, let me just surrender. I feel like I'm heading in the wrong direction here. Let me just stop and collect myself. Now, once you do this, again, I feel like all of these things are going to start popping up for you. You will know what to do with it. Lean on professional help, of course. Do your meditation. If you have your angels coming in and talking to you, um, helping you along, pay attention to that and take it seriously. Okay. You do not have to keep going on in the way that you have. There is help there. If you're watching this and going, what in the world are you talking about? My life is great. That's a lie. Okay. Like we all got stuff we could work on. <laughs> right? But there is something here. Think, think then in terms of um, what do I need to surrender? I have family members that I'm concerned about and I'm watching them make poor choices and I'm freaking out and I'm like, I've been through that. That's not going to work. You're going to, but you know, <laughs> maybe you have to surrender. Obviously, if they're really about to get themselves in trouble, jump in and help them. But, you know, maybe they got to learn their own lessons. I mean, if, if it's somebody that you're dealing with and you can't tell them anything, they just think they know everything, let them figure it out. It's not your problem. <laughs> it's not your problem. So it's that sort of thing. But there is definitely something, everybody who's watching this particular message, there is something that you need to heal. And it has something to do with your thoughts, your thought patterns. As I said, these bottles always make me think of addiction. So are you addicted to victimhood? Are you addicted to uh, reminiscing? Are you addicted to negativity? Now, if you were to say, who the heck is addicted to negativity? A lot of people because they never got resolution. They never got their vengeance. They never got their closure. They don't understand why something happened. And if they control the negativity, maybe it can't hurt them anymore. More of us function from that space than we realize. Okay. So just give that some thought. This is what's happening for you. And we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.